Hello everyone, welcome back to Data Jammers Fast Forward. Last we left off, we defeated La Shred in Chapter 1. Now, we're in the second chapter, The Wilderness. We're going on the speed reef, people. Things are about to get crazy. And, what do you know, creepers are here as well. These autonomous software agents examine network traffic for novel new program code it can steal. Oh, isn't that nice? So it's a type of malware. I guess those are the BitTorrent agents within the internet trying to steal everyone's data. Well, I shouldn't say that. BitTorrent doesn't work like that, and I am a supporter of the program of what it does when it's used properly. Oh, come on. And not to pillage. It's a pretty sweet program. And a good secure download method as well. Oh, no. Don't run into the mines. Yeah, they never formally introduced the mines as a hazard to look out for. Because it's not an enemy, it's just a bouncing mine. Oof. Gotta blow this guy up. And him too. Too low of health to risk it. But those mines are annoying. They'll just be hopping around. You think, oh, I can dodge it, no problem. Oh, man. You know what, we probably needed the bomb more, so that's a good thing. Yeah, if you have a... Ch oh, that was just poor controls on my part, but if you have a choice to go in the lane with data bits or a bomb and you have no bombs, get the bombs, because otherwise you're going to be cornered by creepers. They're not just in Minecraft, they're in data jammers too. They want to jam your data. What's nice about this level though, <laughs> besides those satisfying creeper blasts of the bomb, is those beams of light penetrating the binary track here that we're riding on. It's a lot easier to lead those creepers into that light than it was to lead the enemies into a splitter. Or a sp yeah, a splitter. I was going to say a splicer, but that doesn't make much sense. They're not trying to put you together. They're trying to tear your data apart. Zintar Asteroids. Watch out for the skee-ball. These nasty malware appears to be specifically designed to prevent you from snooping around. Oh, wow. So now we're not only running into vicious malware programs that are stealing bits of any type of code, but there's this guy who is specifically programmed to look out for us. And if we get caught in its laser eye gaze, Oh good, the mines actually kicked in there and helped us for a change. Ah, oh, didn't help us there. But if you get caught in the laser eyes gaze, you will be damaged, so avoid it at all costs. Blow him up! <laughs> oh no. Whew. Handy dodge. Oh man, he even can get you from a uh, track of cross? That's crazy. Oh no, two lane ways are the worst. My recommendation when you're jumping like that, it looks pretty crazy, you're out in the dark, but I am playing with the gamepad, remember, so go forward on the controller, whatever your controller may be. This is really interesting though, it's very much like we're hopping digital asteroids right now. And although I have the music turned down, when you're playing on your own game, I recommend turning it up. The atmospheric, techie soundtrack of Phosphorus, I believe, is the artist. is really awesome. I do believe Digital Eel is quickly becoming one of my new favorite indie programmers. Oh, man. I was going to say, blow him up, but I didn't collect a bomb. Ha! But we don't need any. Because we beat it. And I beat my top score. Well, at least I'm getting better. On some levels. The Hive Planet. Oh, great. Yeah, we're entering the Hive of bombers. Existing outside of the data stream, this program interacts with it by spawning destructive data packets. Oh, great. More malware. Just what we needed on today's trip through the Hive. Ow. 
Oh boy. There they are. The bombers. And these are the enemies I was referring to in episode one, warning against. That you need to send them chucking, hurling into one another in order to defeat them. See? They blow up when they run into one another. So it's unlike these enemies here on the actual data stream that we can get to run into obstacles and other enemies. We have to make these dragonfly bombers bash themselves. You can do that by leading them around while you're on the track and getting them to be frantic trying to bomb you. But don't forget, you've got action on the data stream itself. Don't keep your eyes in the sky too long because you might just miss what's going on down here. Oh man, we are being eaten by creepers. We need a bomb. Yes. Oh, we're glowing. I don't know what that really means. I think it's a invincibility, but it wore off now, so let's not be too risky in getting our data bits. Obviously, the more data you collect, the more of those rings that you hear us run into, the higher your score will be. I also believe that bashing enemies and destroying them plays a role into your score, but I'm not sure how it's all calculated. I know it all goes together. And now I know we're going on the digital DNA. Scanners. This traffic scanning program doesn't appear to care if it causes heavy packet loss. Be careful. Oh, great. Riding on digital DNA, we have to worry out for hands coming to molest the data stream. Oh, damn. I know what these things are. They are dangerous, is what they are. If you get caught in their beam, it takes a lot of your health. Yeah, I don't know what you'd do if you didn't have auto-regenerating health. That's where the programmers here, on many accounts, but here's one, have done a spectacular job. Ha! Ah, get spliced! I mean, get spliced. There I go again. Get split! Get split like shit, like a log. Dropped by a frog. Oh no! See, that is instant death. That's what you get when you do poor rhyming. Oh wow. That was just so awful. <laughs> Try to play okay. I don't know what kind of LP guides people with horrible gameplay, but I guess mine does. That's alright. I hope you can all appreciate the game for what it is. These things are freaking ridiculous and everywhere on this level. And experience this for yourself. The visuals are magnificent. It's really what I appreciate big time when it comes to indie games. Such unique art styles. They really have to... Oh, depend on... Well, we actually got a higher score that time, but we are going to have to try it again. It doesn't have to depend on super high intensity graphics. It just depends on uniqueness and novelty. And that much I really appreciate. So I guess when we have that dun-dun, we have an extra bomb noise. Oh, and that is invincibility. Look at that. Oh, that we're not invincible. Yeah, gotta be careful. Can't take advantage too much of invincibility. Oh, no. Although it's necessary to get on this level. So shall we try and go for that? Okay, not invincible yet. Blow up those freaking creepers. You, annoying following eyeball. Oh, great, you brought a friend. Why wouldn't you? Ah. See, it's very hard sometimes to dodge those palm scanners because they're just circling about. And if you can't get far enough away from them or jump onto a different track, blow you all three up. It's kind of difficult. Oh, not you. Get away, no! Perfect. Whoa, we just caught the tail end. 
right when he was spinning. Ah, come on. Another great thing about this game is that there's so many different paths to take. Every time you jump into play, you're most likely going to have a whole other experience. And if you're like me, you're just going to have an experience of suckage. Alright. For reals now. Let's not die. I don't know why I'm telling you that. You haven't done anything but watched. You're probably face palming right now. Yeah, stay out of the splitter ways. Or the rip saws and the splitters. Oh, I just missed the invincibility. You friggin' rotating eyes. You're pissing me off. Those things are becoming my worst nightmare. Oh, great. I'd rather take damage from those spinning scanners than those creepers. Oh, we're out of bombs. That's the thing I always don't anticipate and need to work on if I'm ever to ever play hardcore for real. Oh, please. Is that I need to grab bombs quicker. Oh, the ripsaws. I can run more of the enemies into one another than I'd be set, but I'm not that coordinated. Oh, no. Live! Aha. Damn. Too narrow a track. Pyromania. Oh, that's pretty sweet. I guess we had our firewall up. Oh, that makes sense. That's why it's a fire symbol. I'm like, invincibility? It is invincibility. Fire? Oh, it's a firewall. And I guess this just shields us from damage. That's pretty cool. Hopefully we've... Oh, I just missed the fire. Yes! After so much repetition, we finally nailed a high score and got through that level. Okay, last one. Data Junkyard. Terrabug. Little is known about this mutant data miner, except for its ruthlessness in acquiring information. Data Junkyard. Level 5. Probably 5th attempt. 2. Highly recommend you guys do not play this at night. Well, you could play it at night, but... Maybe what I should be saying is in the morning, you know, 12 o'clock in the morning, when you've only had a couple of cups of coffee and you're trying quickly to LP a game because eh, you ever want to try and do an LP quickly, it does not pay off. And this game, trying to play blurry-eyed and sleep-deprived, uh, it's not the best way to get through. Okay, bombs. Yep. End your rubbish. Run into one another. Maybe we could get them to run into the beams of light. Or themselves. That works too. But if there are no other bombers around, try and get them into these standing beams of light that are so oh, so annoying and all over the track. If you can use them to your advantage, then that is much better than them. No! And them blowing you up. I don't even want to take a chance with that scanning eye. Oh, jeez. The terror bug. Oh, boy. It's terrible. Ah! And it wants our data! We need bombs. And fast. In order to dodge this guy, don't worry about any loop-de-loops or splitting lanes. It's going to stay like this during the entire boss battle. Yeah, well, give me that data. Oh, I can't believe I missed it. You just have to basically keep rotating around him. And then get the bomb. And blast him to smithereens. Yeah, I know. You don't like to be blown up. It's funny, the boss is not as hard as the actual level itself, I find. Okay, fine. You want to play? Oh, you... That's the important thing you have to remember, and how you can easily mess this up, is just wait for him to be right about to jumping on you, and then use your bomb, so he'll definitely be within range. 
we got the debugger achievement. So I guess we are cleaning up the interwebs of the data jammer highway. Alright everyone, that is chapter 2 of Data Jammers. Fast forward. In the next episode we'll be taking on chapter 3 in what I believe is the final chapter of the game, so be sure to tune in.